some programs that you may have to be enrolled in for you to get postgraduate work permit. So a lot of things are changing. Honorable Mark Miller announced that students can now work for 24 hours outside campus. Who can come in, who cannot, everything seems so tough right now. Another good news, this one is for people within Canada. This couple of immigration plans that every international student needs to know, especially starting from next year this one is for those people that are in healthcare. see i have a personal beef with people that are in healthcare. this is good news okay it's good news hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is dmc on this channel i create immigration videos vlogs all those good stuff so if you like this kind of videos consider subscribing and join the family today i'm going to be talking about some of the latest immigration policies that ircc just released some can be within the month or maybe a few weeks ago and some can be as recent as today okay so apparently as we are trying to make changes in our lives and just preparing for the new year that's the year 2025 IRCC is also making a lot of changes as to you know immigration who can come in who cannot everything seems so tough right now i'm not gonna lie whether you're coming as an international student whether you're coming in as a permanent resident or even a visitor so many policies we're gonna dive into that straight away so in my last video i realized that you guys seem to like that particular video and that's why i decided to bring this video to you a quick one before we go into the video i wanted to quickly touch on the alberta advantage immigration program which is the aip a lot of people have been asking me questions about the video if you've not watched that video you can watch it here it's about migrating into alberta province directly from your country and like getting some points in order to become eligible for this program it is currently on hold at the moment there's a recent news about putting it on hold for now so i believe that even though the draw has not been announced or a date hasn't been announced you should still be able to apply for it so just go to that video and check the description box to apply for the program and then you stay in the pool so that when the draw is announced you may be eligible for the program so i wanted to quickly touch on that because i've been getting lots of questions from that particular video before we also go into the video i want to give a quick disclaimer i am not an immigration consultant i make videos based off my research and some of the questions that people ask me and also just surfing the internet to see what people are interested in so yeah the first one can i even just say that a lot of these policies are targeted at international students some are good some are fair some are bad some are very bad <laughs> but just work with me if you see me looking down it's because i am looking at my laptop here so the first one is about the new regulation governing the working hours policy for international students and that one was actually announced today by the minister honorable mark miller um, you guys already know that there's this debate that has been going on on social media as to whether or not to increase the number of hours of students or not to increase the number of hours of students. A quick background, as of 2023 into 2024, students were eligible to work for, you know, unlimited number of hours. There was no cap at the time. Prior to that, there was the cap of 20 hours if you're working off campus. But after April, when the unlimited hours policy stopped, students went back to 20 hours okay so there's been that debate as to whether or not to increase it or to leave it at 20 hours so today november 15 2024 honorable mark miller announced that students can now work for 24 hours outside campus so if you are within campus of course you know that you don't have restrictions to the number of hours that you can work and this 24 hours cap is for those people that work off campus this is good news okay it's good news compared to 20 hours so yeah there's that the other news that i wanted to bring to you guys and if you guys don't know i tend to bring this news to you i know that some of you might have seen this you know news releases but i try to break them down and explain the implication to you that's how the policy will affect you and all of that so the other one and this one i do not really think is going to affect a lot of international students but it's also good for you guys to know that IRCC has officially closed the SDS which is a student direct stream and the NSE which is the Nigerian student express 
stream. I'll explain. During COVID, IRCC brought up the NSC program, that's the Nigerian Students Express program, specifically for Nigerians in order to speed up their application process. That was during COVID in 2020. SDS, on the other hand, was already an existing program for people in Asia, but like not all the Asian countries, but India, Philippines, Pakistan, I think. Let me just look here. So yeah, India, China, Pakistan, and the Philippines. So there were like 14 countries that could apply through the SDS program. At the time, what they required was to provide a guaranteed investment certificate. So that's a GIC of $20,000 and also they were required to provide language test results. Also submit the evidence of that GIC, not just to say that they do have one. The GIC is like an investment certificate that you open in a Canadian bank. This gives more, like it, it speaks volume to your financial capacity or capability and I usually advise people that could do it to go down that route even if you are not from the Philippines or you know any of the Asian countries I have a friend that did it when he was coming into Canada he actually opened an account here but that was ten thousand dollars because that was the cap at the time right now the reason why it's twenty thousand dollars is because that is now the minimum financial threshold that you should have in your account so at the time the SDS was very very effective for people in, the, in those 14 countries it didn't really have impact that much in the NSC because I did it and at the time it was promised that if you are applying through that stream, you have to write an English test, that's the IELTS, CELPIP and the other one and you have to submit it in your application and automatically once they see that then it goes through the NSC route. It was also promised that within 20 days you get your visa but I didn't get mine within 20 days, it took about two months thereabouts. Other people also tried it and it took longer, Some it actually took lesser than 20 days some was the 20 days so it's just luck right so it wasn't really effective and that's why i said it might not really impact anyone that much i mean the nsc it may impact people that fall into the into the sds category because again it was faster and people also had higher approval rates because once you have your guaranteed investment certificate from a canadian bank with that fund in it and you also wrote your english test you know they sort of like just you have a higher approval chance, right? So yeah, it was really good. But unfortunately, that particular program is now closed or rather those two programs are now closed. And that is that. The other interesting one that I want to talk about, and this one has affected a lot of people, including my folks that have been telling to get a visitor visa, get a visitor visa. There's a new visitor visa rule that is effective November, which is the month that we are in right now. And that is that Officers are now empowered with greater discretion to assess an applicant's individual circumstance more closely to determine the type and validity period of the visa that they can issue. Prior to now, again, if you don't already know, once you get a visa visa, you get approved to the end of your passport. Okay? <laughs> like you get stamped to the end of your passport and that means if you just got a five years visa, you get stamped to five years time if you get 10 years visa you get stamped till 10 years time right now you no longer have that automatic validity period now a visitor visa will assess your application and determine whether you fit to get just six months or one year or two years you know the authorities within their you know control if that makes sense officers are now encouraged to weigh factors like the applicant's purpose of visit financial stability medical conditions and ties to their home country when deciding on the type and the duration of the visa again these things are not entirely new because prior to now if you're coming in as a visitor the officer definitely has to assess whether you know who you're coming to visit all of those information are usually indicated there if you don't know how a visitor application is being done i have a video on that i'll link it up here for you so go check it out it was pretty simple pretty direct my mom came in on visitor visa she got a visa within 10 days i have friends that got theirs within 14 days some got theirs within a week yes a friend of mine had that just came for her convocation and he got his within a week thereabouts so it was that fast. I hope that the approval period will also be this fast. But unfortunately, you may not get that express validity period, which means having automatic 
validity period to the end of your passport that is not a good news but i believe that's also an approach from ircc to tighten some of these you know immigration policies yeah so it's really really sad because what that means is if you have to travel in and out of the country then you have to get like multiple visas so you have to keep applying oh gosh that's going to be exhausting for sure because you can stay within the country for six months and you can go come back maybe after i don't know a few days or whatever but right now you can't just go in and out like that after staying for six months for example you have to go out apply again and then wait for your approval before you come back in and ugh. anyway i don't know but this just means make it while the sun shines okay as tight as everything seems right now i'll still encourage people to go for whatever immigration routes they want to come in through which is whether as a student, a permanent resident, or work permit, because everything just keeps getting tighter and you never know. You never know. Another one that comes to mind is to talk about this couple of immigration plans that every international student needs to know, especially starting from next year. The first one that I'm going to talk about is that Canada plans to welcome more new international students than work permit holders. So based on all of the recent immigration news that we've been getting, it appears that there might be priority for international students than people coming in on work permits. And I don't know if to say that's good news, but maybe because I've been an international student before, so I'll say it's good news for international students. The plan for 2025, 2026, and 2027 is to get over 300,000 each for those three years whilst for the temporary resident worker per worker arrival which includes the international mobility program and the temporary temporary foreign worker program uh, there will be like a decline from over 300,000 in 2025 to about 200,000 in 2026 and then about 200,000 also in 2027 it means that the bulk of the temporary visa holders that will be coming to the country will be more of the international students than the work permits holders another good news this one is for people within canada <sighs> we hear you we see you a lot of people within canada that are done with study and are just waiting to transition from being a student to a permanent resident this particular news is for you canada plans to welcome more new permanent residents from within canada from within Canada. Please just keep your eyes open, your ears open, <laughs> everything of food for this one. I don't know if the category already exists, but there's something called in Canada focus category, and it will be for either students or workers that are looking to transition to become permanent residents within the country. That's good news. This could be through more Canadian experience, class express entry draws, or new policies that will be introduced in favor of people within Canada. Okay. If you guys already noticed, there's been a lot more Canadian experience class stream or draw in the last few months. Another news, and this one would favor people that can speak French, the Francophone people, the bonjour people. <laughs> there will be more focus on people that can speak French language or that has the French language skills, preferably an intermediate speaker from next year outside of Quebec. So you guys know that Quebec is a province in Canada that has a lot more French speaking residents in the country. And also even if you live in Ottawa, if you live in Ontario as a province, but basically in Ottawa and Toronto, there is the bilingual life there. <laughs> Everything is basically in French and English. Like there's more bilingual jobs over there, even in the federal level. Um, so yeah, it's good. Permanent resident pathways will also focus on people that have the French language skills. So if you or you know someone that can speak French, I'd advise you to join the express entry pool or to advise your friends to join the express entry pool because you never know, next year it's gonna be for you guys. I mean, it's, it's already, what we know right like there's been a lot of french draws lately um and their draw is pretty low so you want to do that another one and this one is for those people that are in healthcare. see i have a personal beef with people that are in healthcare. okay for those people that are in the healthcare occupations or the trade occupation in 2025 there'll be a lot of priority for this particular 
um, category. This year we already saw that play out. People in healthcare, people in STEM, in trades, in transport, um, because Canada is looking to address shortages in those particular areas. So if you know someone that is into healthcare or trade then please advise them to be in the pool see guys just be in the pool and if you can enroll in a diploma program or this eight months one year diploma program that helps you to have like an additional certificate just so that it can boost your score a little bit more in the express entry pool that will be great if you don't know some of the factors that are being considered for express entry i will leave a link here for you guys i believe that i have a video on that that breaks down some of the selection factors so like your age your occupation your education yeah all of that i'll leave the link here for you guys i'll leave it in the description box for you so to be eligible for a category based selection draw candidates must have accumulated at least six months of full-time continuous work experience or an equal amount of part-time work experience within the last three years in an in-demand occupation so students who are exper expecting to graduate with postgraduate work permits and wish to pursue Canadian PR after may consider focusing on jobs that align with the category based draws. You guys already even see that the postgraduate work permit right now is looking like it's going to be very strict to get in the sense that there are some degrees like some programs that you may have to be enrolled in for you to get postgraduate work permit. So a lot of things are changing basically and I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. That is why I'm talking about this. Another one that I have for you is this harsh statement that the Minister of Immigration also made today. It says when people came in here and decided to be students, it wasn't a guarantee to become a permanent resident. So he was just trying to respond to all of the concerns of the international students because I don't know if you guys already know but renewing work permit has been quite difficult lately for those people that are within the country that graduated as students or that came in on work permit they've been struggling or even spousal permits they've been struggling to transition to being a permanent resident in the country so there's been all of those challenges here and there and there's been a lot of downsides like cutting numbers of immigration people that are coming in there's just been all of that in case you've not been following the news. So this was one of the, you know, the statements that the minister made more like there is no automatic pathway from study to permanent residency because that wasn't what, you know, was agreed upon before you came in, something like that. Also, work permit extensions are not guaranteed. He also acknowledged the concerns of those people that their work permit expired and are looking to extend and he said that governments will not automatically grant extensions he said some students will have to make a difficult decision as to whether they leave the country or not here he was highlighting necessity of aligning work permits with can canada's labor market needs so yeah also for balancing temporary and permanent residence he also said that we had to reduce permanent residency by a little over 20 percent I guess that was a way to stabilize the immigration system and ensure that it supports Canada's economic and social structure. So yeah, there's been a lot of you know, downsize in the number of immigrants that are coming in or even the number of people getting transitioned. And honestly, I know that is a hard time right now, but I still believe that it's worth trying because I keep getting those questions in my DM. People will say, MC, do you think that Canada is still worth coming to with all of these recent immigration policies and you know, what have you? But I personally would say yes, just be in the pool if you're coming in as a permanent resident. Apply and have all the requirements if you're coming in as a student. The best place to check updated policies or news will be the CIC.ca because that's the official website for Canada Immigration. Also, you can watch videos on different channels to get up to speed. There was another one that the minister talked about concerning asylum claims from... <laughs> From temporary permit holders like students he said a number of these claims are not ethical and he emphasized that asylum is meant for those in genuine danger and should not be used as a workaround for those whose situations haven't significantly changed in their home countries yeah he also mentioned that people need to uphold the integrity of the canada refugee system Okay guys, that's everything that I wanted to talk about. I saw all of these new policies and I thought to put everything together for you and come on here quickly to share with you. I know that some of them, you guys must have heard them already, but I wanted to just emphasize on some of these new policies so that you can 
probably know how that affects you so to speak if you've not liked this video you need to like the video right now <laughs> share and subscribe let me also know some policies that you probably have heard and that i didn't mention in this video it could help anyone that is going through the comment section so please feel free to drop in the comment section again don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel i'm going to be filming another interesting video see i promise you that this particular video you really 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 would want to watch this video i don't know when it's going to be coming out but i would definitely film the video right now so that you guys see the video soon yeah based on my schedule it should be coming out pretty soon all right guys i'll see you in my next one bye